Hi everyone, I'm Robbie Bieber, and welcome back to Collodion Chat. It's been a while since I did one of these, and it's also been a while since I made a plate, so I figured tonight's the night to go ahead and do both. There is one kind of big topic I wanted to cover today, which is actually using strobes to make a collodion portrait, like the whole kind of practical procedure from setup to metering to exposure, which I got a lot of questions about on the last video, so I figured I'd go ahead and do that. Um, there's also a couple of extra things I'm throwing in here, so I don't have a model to work with today. I'm going to be making my first attempt at a collodion self-portrait. There's kind of a clever technique I've seen on the internet lately that I want to give a shot, so we'll see how that works. And the other thing I'm going to be doing tonight is I'm going to be testing the first prototype of my hopefully final design for a 3D printed 4x5 plate holder. So this is the same basic design as the 5x7 and 8x10 that I've already published, uh, but that design turned out to be a little bit tricky to scale down to 4x5 because of the, the smaller margins around the edges. So this is the design that I've worked out to try to get that working at the smaller size. I have actually had the pieces printed and sitting on my desk for about five or six months now, and I've just been too lazy to actually put them together and test them. So I figured, hey, why not give it a test run tonight? So this is going to be my position for the portrait. Uh, I've got my friend, the creepy foam mannequin head behind me, who is going to be assisting me in setting up my lights and also focusing. And uh, yeah, so with all that said, let's go ahead and make a portrait. All right, so before we get started, I'm gonna give you a handheld walkthrough of everything we're gonna be using here, which means you get this very wide and not particularly flattering view of my living room, uh, conflicting light colors and all. Those two fixtures are of the same brand. I have no idea how they're so completely different in color, but whatever. I've got it set so that we're kind of sort of white balanced here in the area that we'll be working. And of course, the final plate, we don't have to worry about white balance because yay, it's black and white. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got here. We will start over here with Casey, the cat of the house, lounging next to the Christmas decorations that we still haven't taken down from last year. I think I can safely beg 2020 as an excuse for that. So let's go ahead and start with our pack over here. So this is a Speedatron 4803 CX pack. It's a 4800 watt second pack. And I have both of our switches set to combine so that the entire power from the pack is gonna be dumped into this one 206 head that we have connected on the right side here. And these two, these two connectors on the right side, these are the special type of connector that only fits the 4800 watt second heads. And the center and left connectors will fit your regular 102 or 202 heads. I also got a pocket wizard connected to trigger the flash. This is just a normal pocket wizard. The sync cable that we have here is a three and a half millimeter to household sync cable. I have no idea who decided it would be a good idea to use these to trigger strobes because this is the exact same type of plug you would also use to plug into your household power outlet if you're in North America. So it's good for syncing your speedatrons. It's also good if for some reason you want to plug your phone or mp3 player into the wall and just completely fry it. Over here we have, of course, the camera. So for portraits on 4x5, I usually use this lens. It's kind of a no-name, um, no-name old Petzval lens. I mean, it's not no-name, it has a name. I think it's Laverne, but it's not a particularly well-known name. Yeah, hey Laverne, well, probably not. Oh, there we go. So this is, I believe, I believe it's a nine inch F4 lens. And your life will be made much easier when shooting Clodian portraits if you can get a lens down in that F4 range, because uh, you're gonna need a lot of light. Now what we have here is our 206 head in a beauty dish. I'm not using a sock because the 
The clothing we're going to be using today is UVPX that I ordered back at the beginning of March. So it's a little over seven months old at this point. And it's honestly going to be pretty impressive if we can get a portrait at all with it. So I'm just kind of trying to get as much power as I can here. I've got a pretty basic clamshell lighting setup here. Um, it's not completely ideal. As a matter of fact, I need to bring this over a little bit. I realized while I was reviewing my footage from the intro. But this is a pretty straightforward setup, right? So we've got one light up top. We've got a reflector under bottom that kicks some light up into the kind of under the chin, under the nose, just sorts of just sort of fills in those areas. Now I have a mannequin head here and I'm going to focus on him and then I'm going to use a laser pointer to position myself, which you'll see once we actually get shooting. And then, of course, just a simple blue background back there. Um, I am not going to show you the process of actually making the plates because I've done an entire series on those that you can go back and watch if you want. Today, I'm just going to focus on actually making this portrait. So I'm going to go ahead and stop recording now. I'm going to put this camera on the tripod and I'm going to start setting up. Okay, here we are again. Let's go ahead and set up our shot. So I'm going to start with metering. Now I use a light meter every time I use strobes with collodion. You can't use a light meter the same way you would use a meter with film or digital, right? I can't just set this to the correct ISO setting and then pop it and get the exact aperture that I need to set my lens to, right? It's, it's not that simple uh, because A, collodion is generally much slower than the lowest setting that your meter will go to. So this is a Siconic L358. This is an older meter, but I really like these. You know, they work well, and it's really easy to find them with the pocket wizard modules thrown in, which means you can just hold this thing up, push the button, and it'll automatically trigger your flashes with the pocket wizard. Um, you know, the, the newer version of this meter, right? Siconic's kind of like middle of the road meter that they sell now, does not have a pocket wizard module. If you want to remotely trigger, po trigger pocket wizards with a modern Siconic meter, you have to buy a more expensive one. So that's why I'm still using this old L358. But this meter will only go down to ISO 3, which is pretty typical for you know modern digital light meters. Now obviously collodion is quite a bit slower than ISO 3. And worse yet, it's inconsistent. So it's not like you can just work out the ISO of your collodion and then use that every time you shoot because it's gonna change. Your collodion's gonna age, you know, your developer might be a little bit warmer, a little bit colder. There's a bunch of different things that can change the effective speed of your collodion, which is why, you know, you can't use this to get a perfect exposure. But I still use it because it's still very useful for two things. Right. First of all, once I do figure out the ideal exposure for this session, which is going to be different each session, but you know, you can use it to you can use it to get a decent starting guess and then you can narrow it down and once you've got your number dialed in, you can use that to move your lights around all you want, do different lighting setups, and as long as you meter to the same value every time, you know you're going to be getting consistent exposures. And then of course, the other thing is that you need the light meter if you want to do if you want to just kind of nail your ratios between, you know, between uh, light side and shadow side, between subject and background, all that fun stuff. I'm not going to be doing any complicated ratios today. This is just a pretty simple one light setup. But if I say wanted to have the background exactly one stop darker than the subject, I'd be able to do that with the meter because for that, all that matters is the relative values. It doesn't matter that the meter isn't giving me an exact exposure value for the collodion. So what do I usually use as a starting point? Where I'm generally gonna start is I set this to ISO 3. And then what I do is rather than trying to like convert the value that I get from the meter to an effective lower ISO, I just think in terms of a much higher aperture value or a much smaller aperture value, right? Higher number that I'm going to need for a given, uh, a given lens. So as an example, with an F4 lens, if I was shooting a headshot on eight by 10, 
I would typically use around F11, F11 plus a half of a stop or so as kind of my baseline starting exposure. Now that's not precise, that's not gonna work perfectly every time, but it usually gets me in the ballpark. For four by five, I would generally go a little bit, um, a little bit less light. I might be around like F8, F8 plus a half a stop. But today I'm using seven month old collodion and even though it's UVPX and it has been refrigerated most of that time, that's still a long time. I'm expecting it to have lost some of its punch. Uh, the fact that I can even confidently use it at all is a minor miracle. So I'm going to try to meter to, let's say about F16. So right now my pack is set at half power. So I'm putting 2400 watt seconds through this head. Let's go ahead and see what that gets us. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the meter right here, close my eyes, pop the flash, and I've got F11 and 7 tenths. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go about a third of a stop faster. And let's just go ahead and see what that gets us. F16 on the dot. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a shot. You know, it might turn out to be a little bit overexposed, but we'll find out. So I'm gonna set the meter aside for now. And now I'm gonna focus. So the problem with doing self-portrait with a view camera, of course, is how do you focus? So this is a trick I've seen some other people use. I'm not sure if you can actually see it on camera here. Let me check the screen. It doesn't seem particularly visible, but what I've done here is I have a laser pointer on a C-stand just out of frame, and it's putting a red dot right here on the side of my mannequin's nose. So the idea here is that I can focus on the mannequin, and then when I substitute myself into the frame, what I can do is I can position my nose so that I just see that laser light right on the side of it, at which point I should be in focus. Now, because collodion is almost completely insensitive to red light, the red dot should not show up in the final plate. So it's just gonna be a really simple, you know, kind of focus accessory that shouldn't get in the way of our shot. So I'm gonna come over to the camera. I'm gonna go ahead and focus up. And for this, I'm going to need to turn my modeling light on. Get myself in the neighborhood by eye. Get my focusing loop. I'll just focus right on his eyes. Turns out styrofoam is not an especially high contrast subject to focus on. But I think that should just about do it. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the camera off while I head out to the garage to prepare my first plate. And then we will expose that plate and we'll see how it works out. Okay, here's our moment of truth. The plate holder is loaded and I'm ready to go ahead and shoot. Now, when I take portraits of other people on wet plate, I have a pretty simple procedure. Right? So you may notice there's no lens cap or shutter on this lens. But when I'm shooting indoors, the ambient light is usually sufficiently dim that I'm really not worried about it. Even for several seconds at a time, I'm not expecting it to make any significant impression on the plate because wet plate is just not very sensitive and indoor lighting is usually not particularly bright. So typically I would just load the plate holder, pull the slide, hit the button on the pocket wizard, and then put the slide back in the plate holder. If I get a couple seconds of ambient exposure, I don't really care because that's not gonna leave any significant impression on the plate. Now this is a little bit trickier because I have to load the plate holder, pull the slide, position myself, pop the flash, and then come back around to put the slide back in. So I think there's actually some risk that I might get a little bit of an ambient light exposure on this plate. Will it happen? Will it not happen? Only one way to find out, but I don't really have any way to 
close the camera off that I can manipulate from my position in front of the lens. So I'm just going to have to hope that this works. I'm just going to have to pop it in, pull it, rush over, and then give myself some instantaneous empathy for everyone I've ever blasted one of these giant strobes at before. So here we go. problem with using my 3D printed plate holder here is that the dark side is actually pretty stiff on these. So it's going to be working against me as I rush to get it back into place. Just one more reason that I'm going to have to be very quick as I go through this process. So here we go. I'm going to drag my mic cable with me as I go. Pocket Wizard's on. I'm just going to take this stool and I'm going to put it right where the mannequin was before. I'm going to sit down, find that laser pointer. I'm going to get it right on my nose. I'm going to look up at the camera. Whew, that's bright. Oh, my deepest apologies to everyone who I have ever made a wet plate portrait of before. Alright, let's get this dark slide back into place. Uh-oh. I got this dark slide is a little bit warped. There we go. Okay. Let's pull this sucker out. Make sure we're in place. And now, with the stars still clearing from my eyes, I'm going to go develop this plate. portrait I've ever made, and I'll go ahead and insert and post a scan of this, but despite being over seven months old, I was actually able to make a halfway decent portrait with uh, UVPX. So it is a very good long-term collodion. You know, this is more light than I would normally like to use for a headshot, but did get the job done. And if I had to, I could probably even have exposed a little bit less and developed a little bit more. But either way, I'm reasonably happy with how this came out. Like I said, not a great portrait. But that's okay because I didn't promise to show you how to make a great portrait. I just that I was going to show you how to make a portrait. So I have technically kept my promise. And I think that is about all there is to uh, this episode of Clothing Chat. Now I'm just going to turn off the camera and go clean up all of this. Thanks for watching, and uh, until next time, happy shooting. <laughs>